Welcome to our beginner's guide to Ritchie Mahjong. As you might know, Ritchie Mahjong looks quite confusing, but by the end of this video, I'm going to convince you that this game is actually very fun. We'll walk you through the basics of Mahjong, helping you understand the key concepts, terms and strategies you'll need to get started. I really suggest you watch the entire video so you can get all necessary information. The video's description will contain the explanation of every term used in the Ritchie Mahjong, so you can use it as a little cheat sheet. Chapter 1. The Basics of Mahjong Mahjong is played with 4 players, using a set of 136 tiles. These tiles are divided into 3 main suits. Manzu, Characters, Pinzu, Dots, Suzu, bamboo. Each suit has tiles ranging from 1 to 9. Then there are also honor tiles. These include the winds, east, south, west and north, and dragons, white, green and red. The objective of Ritchie Mahjong is to form a winning hand consisting of 4 sets and a pair. But we'll break that down in just a minute. Chapter 2. Setting up the game. Now if you're playing Ritchie Mahjong online or in a video game like Yakuza, this part is often skipped. In a real life Mahjong game, the players would begin building a wall of tiles, shuffling them and then distributing 13 tiles to each player. The Dieter, called Oya, received 14 tiles. The Oya sits at the east seat and starts the round by discarding a tile. The remaining tiles form the dead wall and the Dora indicator. The dead wall are tiles not used in this game of Ritchie Mahjong. The Dora indicator help you score additional points, but more on that later. Chapter 3. How to play. Once the game begins, the player sitting in the east seat, the Oja, first discards a tile. Then the player counterclockwise draws a tile and discards a tile aiming to complete a valid hand. A valid hand is compared of four sets and a pair. A set can be a pawn, three of a kind. A set can be chi, a sequence of three tiles in the same suit, or a kan, four of a kind. A pair is simply two identical tiles. Once you've assembled a valid hand, you declare victory with ron, you steal the last tile needed from one of your opponents, or Tsumo, you've drawn the last tile needed from the wall of tiles. Chapter 4. Ritchie This version of Mahjong is called Ritchie Mahjong for a reason, and it's easier than you might think. We've already covered how to make a valid hand, but we can spice this up a little with Ritchie. A player can call out Ritchie when they are one tile away from winning. Calling out Ritchie means they offer up a thousand points of their points total, and while in Ritchie, they are not allowed to touch their hand other than calling Ron or Chumo. When they win with Ritchie, they gain additional Yaku for their hand. What is Yaku? Good that you ask. You also need at least one Yaku to have a valid hand to go out in Ritchie Mahjong. This is why I suggest new players always go for the Ritchie approach when first playing this game. Calling out Ritchie and winning always guarantees at least one Yaku. Chapter 5. Dora We briefly mentioned Doras when talking about the dead wall. This is the Dora indicator. So let's have an example here. If the Dora indicator in the dead wall is the 5 of characters, the 6 of characters becomes the Dora tile. If you have one or more Dora tiles in your winning hand, each one increases your score when you go out with a valid hand. This can turn a modest hand into a powerful one. Now that Dora is clear, it's time to make it a little bit more confusing with Ura Dora. It almost works the same as Dora, but Uradora only comes into play when the winning player has called Ritchie. Another good reason to call Ritchie if you ask me. Uradora or Hidden Dora are extra bonus tiles that are only revealed after a player who declared Ritchie wins. 
When you declare Ricci, you place a bet, pay a thousand points on your hand being one tile away from completion. And this bet is what makes Uradora possible. Let's have another example. Let's say you declare the Ricci and the Dora indicator is a five of bamboo, making the six of bamboo the Dora. After winning, the Uradora indicator is revealed. Let's say it's a three of characters. This means the four of characters is the Uradora tile. If you have a four of characters in your hand, it adds additional points to your score. When the Dora or Uradora indicator is at the end of a sequence, such as the nine of any suit or an honor tile, the next tile in the sequence wraps around to the beginning or cycles through the relevant honor tiles. Here's how it works. Let's say the Dora Uradora indicator is a nine of characters, dots or bamboo. That means the Dora Uradora tile is the one of characters, dots or bamboo. Now the same for honor tiles. Let's say the Dora Uradora indicator is the north wind. Then the Dora Uradora tile is the east wind. Honor tiles are also cycled in a specific order. If the Dora Uradora indicator is the north wind, the Dora Uradora tile will be the east wind, since the wind sequence cycles are east, south, west, north, east, south, west, etc. Then we have the dragons. If the Dora Uradora indicator is the red dragon, the Dora Uradora tile is the white dragon. For the dragon, the sequence is white dragon, green dragon, red dragon, white dragon, green dragon, red dragon. Therefore, if the indicator is the red dragon, the Dora Uradora tile will be the white dragon. Whew. That was a lot of information. Chapter 6. Yaku. Now that you understand what sets Richi and Doras are about, let's finally talk about Yaku. As mentioned before, a hand requires at least one Yaku in order to be a valid hand. Yaku are the building blocks of a successful strategy and understanding them is crucial. Calling Ricci is the easiest way to ensure a Yaku. But what are the other Yakus? If I'm perfectly honest, this list is so long that it's not even worth mentioning them all. Instead, I'll show you a picture of all available Yakus. The picture will also be available in the description. Don't even bother with the Yakuman. These are incredibly rare and difficult to obtain. They will only just confuse you more. Try to get used to the one Han hands first. And once you understand those, slowly learn the two Han hands. This picture is created by the official World Ricci Championship. So this is 100% accurate. As a reminder, all Ricci Mahjong terms are also set in the description. So if I said anything you don't understand, please check out there. You now understand the basics of Ricci Mahjong and you are ready to play your first games. In case you want to watch me play a few rounds of Mahjong, I recommend this video. In that video, I explain which tiles I discard and which ones I keep and why. Also, feel free to join our Discord. In there, I can guide you personally when I have the time. We're also looking for more experienced Mahjong players to help new players out, so feel free to join us. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. I'll respond to each and every one of you. And that's it. Enjoy your games.